the hardest part of a weight loss wellness journey is rebuilding my relationship with eating and stress eating and comfort eating and anxious eating. And people talk a lot about, oh, you need to be a mindful eater. And it's like, well, what does that even mean? What is mindful eating? Like I need targeted specific tools that I can do to help me learn how to be a mindful eater. So I don't blow through my Weight Watchers points so that I don't overstuff myself to the point of feeling uncomfortable. This just doesn't come naturally for me. So today I've got some of my best tips, tricks, and tools that I think you'll really be able to grab for that will be easy for you to use. Okay, tip number one is my favorite. This is my go-to. I love doing a scale of one to 10 or one to five. So just get in the habit of when you sit down with any food, ask yourself on a scale of one to 10, or you could do one to five, how hungry am I? Am I 10? uncomfortably full? Am I at a five where I'm just neutral or I'm at a one starving and anywhere in between that? And just asking yourself that while you're eating, before you eat, after you eat is retraining your brain to check in with your hunger cues and your body. I'm someone that's experienced trauma in my life. So I'm like cut from here up. Like, I don't know what's going on in my body. I just know that there's a lot going on in my brain all the time. And I tend to be like up here in my obsessive thoughts and I'm not in tune with my internal cues of what's happening inside my body. So I need to give my brain something productive to think about that is gonna help me get in touch with my body. And that is the one to 10 scale, or you could do one to five. So before I sit down for dinner, I'll be like, how hungry am I? I'm at a three. Okay, so maybe I won't go back for a second helping because if I'm at a three, I'm not like starving but probably eating a little bit will be good to just stabilize my blood sugar again, get some protein, get some energy, but it just helps me check in. If I come, if I'm running errands and I'm going way past my lunchtime, I may check in when I sit down with a meal and go, oh, I'm at a one. Okay, I'm gonna start with a salad or I'm gonna pull out my zero point kimchi from the fridge. I'm gonna, I, I eat salsa like soup. Sometimes I'll take out my salsa and just get a spoon and start eating it like a soup. Cause I know I need to start eating right away, but I lean into a zero point option to start to fill me up a little bit. And then maybe I'll do a salad because I want to volume eat because I'm at a one, I'll throw a protein in there. Okay, the next hot tip is called the 20 minute rule. Did you know? then it takes about 20 minutes for your brain to register fullness. So that's where this 20 minute rule is gonna come in. You'll set a timer on your phone for at least 20 minutes. And it's just, you can check in with the timer, but it's really gonna start to give you awareness if you're scarfing your food and eating way too fast. And then of course you would be going about back for second and third helpings because your body hasn't even had a chance to process what you've had to eat. So if you expand time for 20 minutes, like yesterday I'm thinking I sat down and I ate a sandwich for dinner and I probably finished it in five minutes. I need to slow down with my chewing. I need to slow down with, you know, taking a sip of water in between bites. Dinners were always very stressful for me because my dad would usually end up yelling and arguing. So I would try to eat fast so that I would be done. And it was just, I don't have good time concepts when it comes to how fast I'm eating. Chopstick challenge. So I love this. Maybe once a week, maybe twice a week. Maybe you decide to do it for dinner every day during the week, but eat with chopsticks. Eating with chopsticks really helps me slow down. Not that much can fit on the end of a chopstick and you have to have good coordination. And so by thinking about your coordination, it slows you down when you're taking each bite. As someone that approaches food like a train going at full speed and just bulldozing through, just the whole process of using the chopsticks can help that one day of week even just remind you what mindfulness feels like. One of my members, I think he's just so fantastic and he's so vulnerable and he's so honest, shared this idea that I've started implementing and it's the leftovers challenge. 
and it's trying to see whether I go out to eat or I'm making a meal at home, like meatloaf or something, how many meals can I get out of this meal, this recipe that I've made? And the challenge is, is to see if I can extend it by at least two days. So before, like if I would buy from Trader Joe's the tray meatloaf, I sometimes would eat most of it in one sitting because I just get so in comfort zone with just volume eating and I want to eat it and it tastes so good. But if I have a challenge that I know I'm going to be doing going into eating it and the challenge is the leftovers challenge and I tell myself ahead of time, see if you can make this meatloaf or this veggie lasagna or it's usually with casseroles, <laughs> whatever it is, last for two days tonight's meal and then two more days having that challenge kind of was like I can do that yeah I've got that you know the ego gets involved and it's like we got this thinking about leftovers can really help bring mindfulness to the in the present moment of when you're eating and then my other tip size of your bowl size of your plates even size of your spoons if you're not using measuring spoons like now I put a tiny bit of may mayonnaise in this breakfast dish that I make and I reach for my smallest spoon in the drawer where I used to just grab the, the normal size spoon. Or like last night I was making my applesauce with a little bit of yogurt and um, it's zero points anyway, so I don't technically need to be worried about portion control, but I, I just wanna be mindful. So I saw myself reaching for the biggest bowl the bigger bowl and I was like no right in the front front I have these perfect tinier size glass bowls that are just great for portion control and so I reach for that and it that helps me be mindful when I'm reaching for the right bowls and plates of the size that is the visual cue of the portion that I'm trying to eat then when I'm eating I'm just more mindful and aware of how much I'm eating so bringing dishes and bowls to the front that are smaller sizes, pushing the other to the back, just having it more accessible. Um, I also make sure that I have a little basket in my kitchen that's organized with my scale and my measuring spoons and cups. And I pull out the basket and it, they're colorful and I just love it. And so they're right there ready to go. So before I even start cooking in the kitchen, I pull out the basket, it's on the counter. And it's just a visual cue that I'm going to be mindful with my portions and mindful with how I put it on the plate with the portion size. So if I start the mindfulness process when I'm cooking the food, plating the food, it carries over to being mindful when I actually sit down and eat the food. I hope these quick tips have been helpful. Please join me on SheilaJaneWellness.com. I have so many offerings for you that we can stay connected outside of these videos. Um, I can work with you one-on-one -on -one, uh, to help you on your journey. I have a library of audios that are just incredible. I can, you can listen to me on the road for quick audios that deep dive into really essential topics that help our weight loss and wellness journey. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.